oxidative stress and free radicals, the good, the bad, and the ugly. So free radicals have been blamed for the overwhelming amount of cellular damage that we see associated with a lot of chronic illness. Is it true that free radicals are causing all of this damage? To some extent, yes, it is. We are surrounded by free radicals and oxidative stressors in our lives, whether it's our cell phones, our Wi-Fi routers, flying in an airplane, drinking, smoking, all different types of lifestyle exposures are capable of creating some amount of oxidative stress in our body. And many times that oxidative stress does lead to cellular damage, cellular membrane damage, nuclear damage, DNA damage, mitochondrial damage. So yes, of course, this is definitely true. There are consequences of being over-oxidized. So should we take as many antioxidants as we can to protect ourselves from all of that oxidation, thereby reducing our oxidative load to zero if that was possible? The answer is no. Oxidation also has a lot of benefits. Oxidation is one of the most important cell signaling cascades for cellular repair for cellular regeneration, for hormone balance, for neurotransmitter balance. And so we need free radicals and we need some oxidative damage to signal the repair and regenerative cycles inside of our body. So the answer is not how do we get it as low as possible? The answer is how do we get it as balanced as we can? One of the questions I get all the time is hyperbaric oxygen is an oxidative therapy, right? Yes, it is. So therefore, isn't hyperbaric just contributing to the over-oxidation of these already over-oxidized patients? And the answer is, could be, but typically no, it's not. Why? Most of the oxidation that we're talking about with regard to over-oxidation and free radical damage, those are what's called exogenous oxidation. In other words, oxidation coming from outside of our body, our phone, our routers, the radiation that's in our atmosphere, those are outside of our body and they oxidize or cause free radical damage to our cells. Hyperbaric is a little bit different. Hyperbaric, you're breathing molecular oxygen. Molecular oxygen, which is O2, is actually very stable. When we talk about free radical oxygen, that's O3. So O3 is three oxygen molecules together and that is not a stable molecule. So O3 is very reactive. O3 is actually ozone. O3 is very reactive, and when that singular oxygen molecule is let go, because it's so reactive, it has the capacity to cause cellular damage. O2, however, is very, very stable. So you're in a hyperbaric chamber, and you're breathing O2, a stable molecule, and as a result of that O2 exposure, that oxygen is making its way to your mitochondria. It's one of the rate-limiting steps to ATP production is the amount of oxygen that your mitochondria are ultimately getting. So as you drive more oxygen into your cells, you drive more ATP production, which is generally a great thing for most of our cells to upregulate their function. However, your mitochondria are not 100% efficient at processing the oxygen. So a byproduct of cellular respiration is a thing called superoxide, which is a free radical version of oxygen. However, this is a free radical that is released from the mitochondria as a result of normal cellular respiration, meaning your body expects a certain amount of superoxide to be released into your system as your cells are bringing oxygen to oxidize the fuel to make cellular energy. And as a result, we have a defense mechanism already built in to protect us. It's called your own endogenous antioxidant system. It's composed of certain chemicals like superoxide dismutase or glutathione or catalase. These are chemicals that you already have inside your body and they are geared specifically to help you process that superoxide, turn superoxide back into water and make it completely safe and benign. If you have a patient that's already very sensitive or clearly already over oxidized, you wouldn't wanna take that patient and drive them into a chamber at two and a half atmospheres on 100% oxygen, very high pressure, high percentages of oxygen, because could you over-oxidize them through that mechanism? Yes, it's possible. However, what we also know about hyperbaric is if you start gently and you expose patients over a period of time to lower pressures and lower percentages of oxygen, as you increase mitochondrial function and produce a little bit more superoxide, your body's response to that isn't over-oxidation, it's an increase in the endogenous antioxidant system. 
it increases superoxide dismutase. It increases glutathione. It increases catalase. So it increases your capacity to tolerate that superoxide. And as you're increasing your ability to tolerate that superoxide, you're also increasing your body's capacity to handle oxidation from the outside world. And so if you take a patient who is very sensitive and potentially already overoxidized, but you just stimulate this pathway slowly internally through normal cellular respiration, through normal superoxide release from mitochondrial ATP processing, you can increase their capacity, you can increase their resilience to superoxide and to their environment. So you can use hyperbaric as a tool to improve a patient's resilience to oxidation in general if you approach it from that standpoint. And typically, most of our patients, we start at lower pressures, and as we see fit, we build up percentages of oxygen, and we build up the pressures that they're being exposed to. And as a result, we can get them to tolerate more mid-range or even higher pressures of oxygen without any issue whatsoever. Why is this so important? It's so important because we need to have some amount of oxidation inside the body to help stimulate those hormones, to help stimulate neurotransmitters, and to help stimulate those growth factors for repair and regeneration of cells. And at the same time, we need to protect ourselves from the overoxidation of our environment. Hyperbaric tends to allow us to do both. It helps us maintain the stimulating effect and the benefits of oxidation, while also helping us be protected from being overoxidized from exogenous sources that we all have in our environment. So I hope this helps answer the question of what is the good, the bad, and the ugly of oxidation, and where does hyperbaric fit in that model? I appreciate your time and your attention, and we'll see you next video. So whether you're a chiropractor, or a naturopath, or an acupuncturist, or a DO, or even an MD, but you're looking at hyperbarics through this lens, the lens that I'm describing, which is applying hyperbarics for all these off-label conditions, this is the class that teaches that. And right now, it's the only class that teaches this type of hyperbarics in this way and that's an actual certification course. Check out hbotusa.com and uh, right across the, the top you'll see upcoming events. You can click on that and it'll show you uh, when our next courses are gonna be.